It's the assault rifle for U.S. combat troops. Speed. Accuracy. Strength. The M16. So powerful, it can rip through steel at 400 yards. Yet its recoil is so small that even novice shooters can handle it. Now, the story and the secrets behind America's mega weapon, the M16, inside and out on high impact. It can eliminate a target 600 yards away. Fire bullets at a speed of over 3,000 feet per second. Obliterate a cinder block wall on fully automatic. In today's combat environment, usually most engagements occur at about 150 to 200 meters out. These are good for anywhere from short range marksmanship all the way up to six to 800 meters. From the jungles of Vietnam to Middle Eastern deserts, for over four decades, the M16 has been the primary weapon of America's warriors. This is by far the most important weapon to come out of the last half of the 20th century. This is definitely the workhorse of the United States military. And it's not only a workhorse for the military. When major cities are threatened, they too reach for the M16. SWAT, Special Weapons and Tactics. Elite law enforcement units trained and equipped to deal with high-risk operations. We're involved in serving search warrants, arrest warrants, also barricaded suspect situations where patrol officers do not have the equipment, the training, and uh, it's a situation where they're going to have to call the SWAT team. And although they have an array of weapons and technology, no SWAT unit is complete without the M16. What I like about the weapon that it, it is uh, extremely light and it has good stopping power. And in extreme situations, it's the M16s that give SWAT the ability to take down the most dangerous bad guys on the streets. <laughs> February 28th, 1997, North Hollywood, California. At 9.17 a.m., Two men, Larry Phillips Jr. and Emil Matasarano, are spotted walking along a sidewalk leading to the North Hollywood branch of Bank of America. Both wear masks and homemade body armor. Phillips had uh, full chest and back plate armor. He'd also taken extra body armor that uh, covered not only his legs, but covered his arms and forearms. Phillips had spent weeks carefully piecing together his suit of armor. Matta Serrano wore a Kevlar vest. Matt Serrano had uh, full body armor, but he didn't have the arm plates all the way down, and he didn't have the lower leg, any lower leg uh, plates on it. The two also carried a virtual armory's worth of weapons. When the suspects walked into the bank, they both had fully automatic AK-47s with drum magazines. They had a 308 uh, fully automatic, and they had an M16 fully automatic. The robbers also carried about 3,300 rounds of ammunition, some of it armor piercing. These two suspects uh, were, were fully prepared for, for a gun battle. As Phillips and Mata Serrano approach the bank, two patrol officers spot them. They immediately call in a 211, armed robbery. They right away put out the broadcast and all responding police officers are now setting up a perimeter or closing the streets off. Eight minutes later at 925, 
Phillips and Mata Serrano walk out of the bank. Between them, they're carrying over 300,000 in cash. They immediately notice something's wrong. The normally congested Laurel Canyon Boulevard, directly in front of the bank, is deserted. Phillips spots the cops waiting behind their cars. California, be advised these witnesses say they have AK-47. He opens fire with his AK-47. Dozens of rounds of armor-piercing ammo plow into the cars. It's a round that is designed to penetrate tanks, so it's gonna go through these cars like a hot knife through butter. There's literally no secure place for the uniform officers to hide. Returning fire with their nine millimeter handguns, the cops can't compete with the two criminals in full body armor. Former SWAT member Rick Lopez demonstrates how ineffective the police rounds were. As you can see, here's the entry. And no exit, no penetration whatsoever. Just not enough firepower with the 9mm to penetrate this. Even though they're outgunned, the cops are determined to keep the suspects from escaping. For nearly eight minutes, a fierce gun battle between the cops and robbers rages through the streets. Phillips and Mata Serrano pound the area with bullets, hitting 10 officers and seven civilians. It was then decided by a sergeant there to notify SWAT. As the street cops await the SWAT team, Phillips and Mata Serrano try to make their getaway. Even though officers had shot out their tires, the two roll forward, guns blazing. come out of the parking lot right here onto Archwood. They make a right turn. Larry Phillips is on foot. Emil Montesrano is in the car. But Phillips' AK-47 jams. He drops it to the ground and pulls out a 9mm handgun. He then engages uh, the officers that are uh, just east of the bank, uh, on the street just behind the bank. A bullet strikes Philip's hand. Wounded and surrounded, he knows it's over. He gets to this point right here, right where I'm standing. He drops the gun, reaches down, picks it up, deliberately puts it under his chin, and presses the trigger. With one suspect down, a desperate Mata Serrano was on his own. He's driving on flats, so he wants to carjack another car to get out of the area. He tries to commandeer a pickup truck from a bystander and loads his weapons into the truck. There's only one problem. He realizes the keys aren't in it, and he can't use that truck as a, as a second vehicle. With his options running out, he returns to the crippled getaway car just then, the SWAT team arrives. Rick Massa is one of the three SWAT members. We can see a dark figure moving around behind the windshield. We see the bullet holes in the windshield. We don't know what it is. Until